this special episode of The Decision Makers, RM of North Cypress Langford's CAO, uh, Trish Fraser, walks us through how to run for council and what the job of a councillor or a reeve is. Now this information, as she gives it, is specific to their RM. However, most of it is applicable broadly to anyone who is interested in running for municipal council or even anyone who's interested in the process in general who is uh, looking to maybe vote for the first time or just looking at how things run um, for now or for the future. So thank you to Trish for putting this together for us and please enjoy. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Trish Fraser. I'm the CEO for the municipality of North Cypress Langford. Um, today, I'm going to show you a presentation for those who are interested in running for election this coming October. Um, it'll be a short presentation, just more of an informational session. And uh, if you have any questions, I have my contact information at the end of the slide. So I'll just get started here. Okay. Bear with me, I am not good at um, PowerPoint presentations. <laughs> okay, so to start out with, the municipality of North Cypress Langford was established in 2015 when they amalgamated with the RM of Langford. Our population is, right now, according to the 2021 census, we are at 3,100. Our council consists of our head of council, the Reeve, and six council members, and we have six boards. So um, prior to last year, our mill rate for Langford and North Cypress were two different mill rates. And last year, we finally combined those mill rates together. Now we only have one mill rate, and that mill rate was at large at 6.558 this year. It took a long time to get to that number. And our overall assessment is 8,783,277. So what we do here, so our required services are our roads, fire and police, waste management, planning, and weed control. And we also have other special services that we have and would be our dust control application, so our calcium, our recreation services, our support, animal control, and we also have um, water supply for some of our residents. And I'm just sharing with you our map kind of pieces of our map that everybody can see so like i said before we have six wards um, and based on elections there is one counselor per ward so this is just kind of a picture of exactly the wards that you rank for and how big they are um, yeah so organizational chart. So just to kind of give you an overview of how we run. Um, so at the top is obviously council. Underneath council is myself and then I'm as a CAO. And then underneath me, I have our public works foreman, my assistant CAO and my administrative assistant. Now our public works foreman has obviously his team of six public work operators and then um, a weed supervisor and our transfer station attendant. Um, we also have casual uh, or seasonal mower operators as well, so he looks after all of them. But everybody under me reports to me and then I report to council. Did you know? So just a little overview. The municipality of North Cypress Langford and the town of Carberry share. Oh. Hang on, I'm having some slideshow difficulties.
bear with me here, sorry. Okay. So this isn't gonna work here, but anyway, um, hopefully you can see my screen. The municipality of North Cyprus, Langford, and Town of Kyrie share the revenue and expenses 50-50 for many budgetary items. So a few examples would be our Carver and North Cypress Langford Fire Department, Parks and Recreation, our Old Town Office, the Emergency Measures Coordinator, Nuisance Grounds, uh, which is at the Carberry Transfer Station, the Joint Utility Employee, our Manager of Parks, Facilities, Sanitation, Manager of Leisure Services, the Seniors Handyman, CPCC, which is the Carberry Plains Community Center, the hall, the museum, library, drop-in center, cemetery, arts, and archives. The slideshow wants to work again. I love it when technology doesn't want to work. <laughs> so, my slide. Okay, so to start off, um, your role as a council member. Now, this is obviously the question everybody has. Um, your duty as an elected official in municipality is to make decisions regarding services and policies and programs. How? So each council member gets one vote, and the majority vote is needed to make a decision of council. Council members are required to uphold the decision of council, even if they voted against the motion. Council members are expected to make decisions based on the best interests of the municipality, not the best interests of their ward. That is very important to keep in mind. What? So council's responsibilities include developing and evaluating the policies and programs of the municipality, being accountable to the public for your decisions, ensuring that all decisions are in accordance with the powers they are assigned, and the role of administration. So this would be pertaining to myself and anything else under me, basically. So the municipality of Cypress Langford has three full-time municipal office employees, including so myself, the CAO, my assistant CEO, Teresa Parker, and my administrative assistant, Nellie Sibyl. So my responsibilities are obviously uh, <laughs> pointed out in the New Civil Act. Um, so my job is to ensure that policies and programs of the municipality are implemented, ensure that the minutes of the council meetings are prepared without comment and distributed in a timely manner, provide professional support and advice to aid in council decision-making, manage finances of the municipality, advise and inform council on the operation of the municipality, manage, lead, and direct the rest of the, rest of the employees of the municipality. Council Code of Conduct. Um, the Municipal Act has brought in the code of conduct uh, and that is a requirement now that each council member is expected to adhere to that code of conduct. There is training offered online and everybody, it's a mandatory thing. If you are elected, you have to take part in this code of conduct. It's very important to understand. Code of conduct includes the following provisions. Respectful con conduct, respect must be shown to other members of council, staff, and the public. Respect for decision making. Once council has made a decision, all members are required to uphold that decision. That is a very important fact. It's uh, something that as a newly elected official, you should be aware that no matter what the decision of council is, you need to support that whether you are in favor of it or not. Preferential treatment. No member of council may give per preferential treatment. Respect for role of administration. No member of council shall attempt to require a municipal employee to undertake personal or private work on behalf of the member. There are those key factors in here. Uh, I showed back our organizational chart where it's council, myself, and then everybody else. 
Uh, Council should not be going over me to my staff. It's always to myself. And then I reiterate those, um, whether it be something they want changed or something they have a suggestion for, they should never be speaking directly to staff without my consent. Changing, I guess for changes is what I'm trying to refer to. <laughs> Election campaign work. Uh, no member shall use any municipal equipment or assets in order to carry out a campaign on their behalf. All elected officials are required to take the code of conduct training each term, which I indicated at the beginning of this slide, is a mandatory training that you have to take. I think you have, I can't remember exactly how many months it is, um, but you do need to complete that within a certain amount of time as well. My slide isn't going to work here, sorry. Um, every member of council who fails to meet his or her obligations under this code of conduct is subject to censure by council. That is very important. Like I said before, it is mandatory. So that is something that when you are running for council, you need to be fully aware of. Sorry, my slides are all over the place right now. Just bear with me for a minute here. Okay. Time commitment. This is a big question for most of you, um, I guess, in regards to, you know, how much time do I have to spend being a counselor? And like, what kind of, um, you know, meetings would I be attending? How long are they? Um, what are our council meetings? That sort of thing. This will hopefully answer those questions for you. How much of my time will be required if I get on council? So our regular monthly meetings are held the second Monday of the month. And they are held at nine o'clock in the morning. And depending on what is on the agenda, they could be an hour. You could be here till noon. It just depends on what is all listed on the agenda. Normally, our meetings don't run over two hours. Um, they have before, uh, just depending on, like I said, what's going on. So that's for our council meetings. Now, each councillor will serve on several committees and boards, which can hold monthly or bi-monthly or quarterly meetings. So I will list those out as well in the next slide here. Each council member may attend various conventions, seminars, and conferences throughout the year. Um, so there are con two conventions for AMM, which is the Association of Management Municipalities, which we are we have membership through. Um, and they have conventions in the spring and also in the fall. So they alternate between Brandon and Winnipeg. Um, this year, the fall convention is in Winnipeg, and it is for about not quite three full days, but you are, it is very um, helpful to attend those. It's a lot of um, networking and just there's a trade show, there's a lot of information that is very important that council, you know, attend. And sometimes you get stuff out of it that others wouldn't. Um, you do meet people this way. It's just a great way to network and also just kind of meet new people as well, right? So um, each council member will have to make themselves available to residents and rate pairs for questions, concerns, and requests. Um, so if you are elected, normally we would put your information on our website. Um, or obviously we'd have your contact information. So sometimes when people phone in, we will refer to their ward counselor. They then phone you or email you um, with their concerns or request, and then you can contact myself um, depending on what the concerns or the request would be. So you should be available to the public if you are elected as council. It is a requirement of a member of council to attend and participate and vote at council meetings. So like I said at the beginning of this slide, our monthly council meetings are held on the second Monday of the month. Um, it's one day, uh, not even a day, it's for two hours. Um, so your minimum requirement, and it's once a month. So um, that is very important. All the decision making happens at those council meetings. So whether you our attendance or not you it's very important that you attend them um it's uh i mean i know that sometimes it's hard to commit to if you have you know another 
job going on or something like that. But if you are not in attendance, um, it makes that much harder for council to decide on on uh, going ahead with certain things. So. <clears throat> and yes, also, you may be disqualified if you miss three consecutive meetings of council. So just a heads up there. Compensation. So what do councillors get paid for? So we have a bylaw that sets up all the <laughs> compensation for councillor and the head of council. So uh, councillors are right now at monthly compensation of $991.48 per councillor. Our read is at $1,052.62. That is a monthly compensation. So meetings, <clears throat> seminars, and conventions receive a rate based on the length of the meeting. Um, maximum of $125 per day. Mileage, um, it's also paid at 60 cents per kilometer traveled. We just upped that uh, with fuel increase this year. And then you also get a monthly communication allowance of $50. So that is for your phone. Um, other expenses incurred while performing municipal duties, such as meals and travel costs, are reimbursed monthly by the municipality. So hopefully that kind of gives you an overview of what you would be expected to pay to get paid, sorry. <sighs> Internal committees. So there are several internal committees that you are required to attend and take part in. Um, at the start of the, the first meeting after elections, um, these committees will be, you'll be appointed to these committees by your head of council. Uh, so just a heads up, the head of council has the right to appoint you to any committee they choose. <laughs> so we have finance, and personnel, transportation services, public works, joint committee, which is with the town of Carberry, as we have lots of jointly shared facilities <clears throat> and employees, planning, which is our planning districts, waste management, which would deal with our transfer stations, and our municipal buildings. So that is obviously our joint municipal building with the town of Carberry. Then we have our external committees. So we have Evergreen Environmental, Watersheds, so we have White Mud and Central Assiniboine, Archives, Carberry Arts Cemetery, the Carberry Cemetery, Carberry Museum, Service for Seniors, Handy Van and Nad Co, um, the Library in Carberry, the Health Action Committee, and then we also have our recreation boards, which we have Bellwood, Edrins, Brookdale, Langford, and the CPCC. So those are committees that you could be expected to be appointed on. And some of the committees meet monthly, some meet more than a couple times a month, some will meet quarterly. It just depends on what is going on, basically. So that is something that you can expect to take part in. resources. So <clears throat> this is kind of ending things off. Hopefully that kind of at least gives you a bit of an overview of what to expect as a council member if you are elected or head of council. It's just a brief overview. Um, there might be a few things that I've missed but it just basically kind of sets out what you can expect. Um, so resources, your candidate packages, uh, our senior elections official, Teresa Parker, has that information. So um, you can contact her at our office. Um, and then we also have our website. It has various information on there as well. Um, any kind of updates, notifications, that sort of thing is all posted on there. Um, social media, we have our Facebook page. So if you're interested, you can look her name up on Facebook and you can like her page. And that is all of our updates. Um, regarding just like happenings of what's going on and <clears throat> road closures, that type of thing. You can also contact myself if you have any specific questions. I am always, always uh, available to answer any questions you may have um, or contact the fellow counselors that are running or that are 
available right now. Um, they are very, um, they've been here for four years. Some have been here for more than four years. Um, and they'd be happy to answer your questions. You're going to probably have questions that I haven't answered. Um, but I mean, like I said, I would gladly help you. Um, and yeah, and I wish those who are running the uh, best and in your candidacy and hopefully, you know, this information provides a bit more details for you um, in, in possibly gathering your candidate packages. So um, it's always great to see people running in our municipality and uh, just know that you are running for the municipality. And if, if you uh, are interested, give us a call. Give Teresa a call, she's got the package information. And yeah, I think that's all I had. There are um, other informational um, sites that you can look on. There's AMM website, which I just forgot about, um, Association of Manitoba Municipalities. They have all the updates as well of what's happening too in the municipal world. So that's also a handy tool to have. Um, but again, questions, concerns, any type of um, election related information, Teresa Parker will have for you. Um, but any questions in regards to just running for council, um, day to day duties, that sort of thing, please give myself a call. Like I said, you can call any of the council members right now and they will gladly help you out as well. So all right, hope that wasn't too boring. <laughs> I'm not really good at public speaking. So it's not like public, I'm by myself. But anyway, uh, thank you very much for listening. And I think that concludes my presentation. So I hope everybody has a wonderful day. And I'm just going to end my recording. So thank you all and have a great day.